Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the kind introduction. So uh, my name is Paul Staat, and as already mentioned, um, I'm with the um, Max Planck Institute in Bochum, Germany. And um, in today's talk, I present our paper um, with the title Analog Physical Layer Relay Attacks with Application to Bluetooth and Face-Based Ranging. And uh, this is a joint work with my co-authors um, Kai Jansen, Christian Sänger, Harald Eldersboll, and Christoph Park. So uh, most of you have probably heard of relay attacks um, because they can be used to um, to accomplish car theft within seconds. And um, in the relay attack, uh, the attacker makes distant parties being able to communicate by forwarding radio signals. And um, unfortunately, many access control systems of, um, for instance, cars are built on the assumption that the ability to communicate implies proximity. And um, this certainly is not the case because uh, this assumption can be invalidated using some cheap off-the-shelf radio equipment, which is available at uh, 11 bucks, as we can see here on this report from Wired. Um, and in turn, as there is a communication channel, then um, the car falsely believes to be in proximity to the key fob and falsely unlocks. And uh, this um, gives the attacker access to the car. And this strategy actually is used by criminals to steal cars. And here we can see a picture from a, from a video which was um, already shown by, by Satan Kapkun in the opening um, keynote this morning. And this shows such an attack being conducted on a previous system. So in our paper, we show that um, relay attacks are also possible against the latest generation of access control systems, um, which now use smartphones instead of dedicated key fobs. Um, we introduce an analog physical air relay attack, um, which allows bidirectional forwarding of um, communication signals, say um, Bluetooth communications. And um, we present a practical implementation of this kind of attack. And uh, we use it to, um, to forward the signals of the Tesla Model 3 phone key system. And um, finally, we investigate carrier phase-based ranging as a countermeasure, and we introduce a novel distance manipulation attack against uh, this phase-based ranging. So increasingly, and in line with the technological convergence, um, smartphones are now replacing dedicated key fobs, and uh, this is based on the one device can do it all rationally. Yeah? So, um, and this, of course, requires some ad hoc short range communications between the car and the key, um, which is here uh, replaced by the smartphone. And um, for this, Bluetooth low energy is now being used. And um, this is because Bluetooth is, of course, um, available in virtually every smartphone today. And um, the question which arises from this is, um, is Bluetooth based uh, smartphone access control vulnerable against relay attacks. And while we know that previous access control systems of cars were very prone against relay attacks, um, there is not such a clear answer when it comes to Bluetooth now. And this is because there is simply not such a clear answer um, because um, when it comes to Bluetooth, because there are no such um, such attacks to date. And um, to understand why this is, we next look into um, the previous generation access control systems and uh, how they work, and also how they differ from the Bluetooth system. So the previous access control systems in the automotive domain um, used a wireless communication protocol, which was specifically designed for the keyless entry application. So here we have a challenge response protocol going on, um, where the car transmits um, signals um, to the key fob on a low frequency uh, channel. And this is at around 130 kilohertz, can be other frequencies as well. Um, and these frequencies only have very short range of one or, two me uh, one or two meters. So when the key receives the signals, it responds on a UHF channel at around 400 megahertz. And they are rather long range compared to the low frequency signals. And um, now, when it comes to an attack, um, this asymmetric wireless channel, uh, which is split into the uh, low frequency um, portion and the high frequency portion, gives um, the, the relay attacker 
a, um, a, a significant um, advantage because it eases the implementation of the relay attack so, um, so much. Yeah, so when the attacker now needs to forward the signals to the, to the key fob and simply does this, and um, when the key then responds, this does not even uh, require um, amplification in many cases because the, um, the high frequency signals are so long range. Um, um, the important takeaway which we, which we make here is that the attacker can independently handle the signal directions because they are on a different frequency. And uh, this is also the kind of systems um, for which uh, semi-professional relay devices can be purchased online from these dubious vendors. Now, when we use Bluetooth, things are a bit different. And um, there is still a challenge response protocol going on between the two parties. Um, but now they use the same 2.4 gigahertz wireless channel, which they share over time um, to, to, to make the, the access control system. And um, this introduces new challenges for the attacker. And in the adversarial setting, the attacker still forwards the signals, this time to the smartphone. And uh, when the smartphone responds, the attacker is forced to also forward the signals from the smartphone to the car. And this is because both signal directions have the same range because they are on the same frequency. The problem is that this leads to self-interference. And uh, this is because of the same frequency. The attacker essentially builds a large feedback loop, uh, which um, I like a positive feedback loop, which would then eventually amplify itself. And this is something that we do not want to build. And um, therefore, in the paper, we ask, we ask ourselves, um, how can we avoid self-interference? And um, this, for, to come up with the solution, um, we make a key observation when we consider um, time division duplexing. And the key observation here is that in the time division duplex, uh, the peers do not transmit at the same time, but they alternating, alternatingly uh, transmit. And our idea is now that the attacker amplifies the victim signals um, as needed, so according to the current signal direction, which, is, which takes place in the time division duplex. Um, the problem now is that the transmit receive timing of the, vict of the victim nodes is not known to the attacker. And to resolve this, we propose uh, this hardware setup. Um, and here we use an RF power detector uh, to sense transmissions of one of the victim parties. So paired per default, our setup um, forwards signals from the smartphone to the car. So now when the car starts to transmit, the power detector senses this, and then triggers a, a set of RF switches to switch the signal directions on the relay. So then signals are forwarded in the other signal direction from the car to the smartphone. So thereby we achieve a coarse timing synchronization to the TDD of the victim parties. So we have actually realized this approach um, as a cable-based proof of concept. And um, for, these, uh, for this, we used uh, ready-to-use RF uh, building blocks, which we deployed in a primary and a secondary station. And um, these two stations are placed within, uh, in between the victim parties, so in between the car and the smartphone. Um, so we tested this setup in a real-world case study um, to tag the phone key system of the Tesla Model 3. And um, for this, we, we used our setup to, to bridge a distance um, between the car and the smartphone of 65 meters. And we, with the setup in place, were able to unlock and start the engine of the Tesla um, when the smartphone was at a distance of 65 meters. And this obviously should not be the case. Uh, so we conclude that we launched a successful relay attack on the Tesla Model 3. So we also analyzed um, the phone key system of, um, of this car um, in a legitimate use case. So um, for this, we approached the car with the phone and then noted the distance of unlocking. And um, 
Then we moved away from, from the car again and noted the distance when it locked again. And an interesting observation is that the distances are largest uh, when we have the phone in the hand, and the distances are lowest when we have the phone in the trouser back pocket. So um, the difference between these two cases now is that one case is a line of sight channel, and the other case is a non-line of sight channel. And that means that um, the received signal strength will differ. And um, together with the observation that we launched a an amplification only um, uh, attack, a relay attack successful on the, on the phone key system. And with this observation together, we conclude that the phone key system of the Tesla Model 3 um, uses received signal strength um, as, a, as, a, as a mean to, to provide proximity detection. And um, this is in line with what the Bluetooth specification offers to us. So the Bluetooth specification in its current version 5.3 um, has essentially two, two measures to, to, to obtain distances from, uh, from the radio signals. And this is on the one hand the received signal strength, RSSI, and on the other hand this is an angular estimation approach where triangulation is used um, based on, on uh, finding angles of, of signals. Um, so the received signal strength is known to be notoriously inaccurate and also, of course, insecure because it can be defeated using simple amplification. And um, the other measure is, um, um, is based on, on using multiple devices. And uh, in our case, we are interested in finding the distance between two devices, so say one car and one smartphone. And when we consider this, um, the angular estimation approach um, cannot be used because it requires at least two or three um, receivers to, to, to work with the triangulation approach. So to, 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 to improve the, um, the inaccurate distance measurement results um, and when compared to the, to the received signal strength estimation, which uh, is built on, um, on path loss estimation, um, like major chipset manufacturers, or manufacturers of Bluetooth transceivers now start to complement their Bluetooth transceiver, transceivers with um, proprietary distance measurement techniques. And um, there are at least two, uh, two examples of well-known vendors, and uh, they use a phase-based ranging uh, where they achieve uh, under 50 centimeters measurement accuracy in their measurement routines. So in fact, the Bluetooth ZIC on their website lists a specification under development which has the name High Accuracy Distance Measurement. And um, it's not clear yet what, how this specification will look like, but after doing a bit of research online, um, one can find reports from a Korean standardization organization uh, from some Bluetooth ZIC working group summits from back from 2019 already. And they say essentially that, um, that they considered a relay attack protection in their meetings. And they also say that phase-based ranging was discussed as a candidate technology. And most, more recently, um, Infineon also markets their coming Bluetooth transceivers um, as being capable of something called HADM. So um, after all, we can say that distance measurement is coming for Bluetooth but we don't know yet how it will look like. But the reports we can find online suggest that phase-based ranging was or is at least discussed as a candidate technology. So, um, of course, this motivated us further to look into phase-based ranging as well with um, our setup. So in the phase-based ranging procedure, um, when two parties um, want to find the distance to, uh, between them, um, one party transmits an unmodulated RF carrier and um, then counts the cycles which elapsed and uh, obtains a phase measurement. And this phase measurement is a linear function of the distance d in between them. Um, the problem now is that the phase wraps with 2 pi. So this is something we don't want. And for this reason, um, the parties transmit another carrier on a different frequency. It has, it has a different, uh, like a slight frequency displacement. And then um, the parties obtain a 
second phase measurement on the second frequency. By taking the phase difference between the, those two phase uh, measurements, like uh, here uh, plotting it versus frequency, the slope of this, um, of this plot will tell us the difference. So the phase difference between these two measurements um, gives us the distance effect. So we examined a phase-based ranging implementation on a Bluetooth transceiver from one, one of the major Bluetooth um, chipset suppliers. And uh, this particular implementation gathers phase, phase measurements in rapid succession um, on, in a frequency suite. So um, there are a total of 40 different frequencies measured, and this yields 39 um, distance estimates, which, which are available for averaging, and then this can combat noise and multipath effects. So we again used our setup to relay those signals, and um, the total distance in between these two, uh, two parties now is the sum of all the individual link distances. So we relayed the signals over a distance of 86 meters, and then also um, one must account for the, for the distance to the attacker. And um, therefore we expect the distance to be at least 87 meters. So when they now measure the distance using the phase-based ranging procedure, um, they correctly measure the large increased distance uh, due to the signal range extension attack. So here we see that the distance is around 90 meters, and also uh, the distance increases as one party moves further away from one of the attacker parties. Um, so to conclude this slide, the phase-based ranging procedure helps the victim parties to, to correctly identify the relay attack taking place because the distance is measured correctly. The question now is whether we can manipulate uh, these measured distances again. And the very first security analysis of uh, phase-based ranging was presented by Ulla Stotir et al. at CHESS 2017. And in their work, uh, they um, proposed to manipulate each phase measurement um, individually to manipulate the measured distances. And thus far, however, however, it was not clear yet um, whether this attack they proposed uh, could be realized in practice. And this is what I will talk about next. So there's one, some weird stuff going on with my presentation. I'm not sure what this is. I'm sorry for this. Um, but um, so we now simply assume that that, that the attacker is able to, to shift the phase uh, of the victim signals um, by, say, the phase shift phi A. And when the attacker does this, um, the victim parties will also measure a, an offset distance, which is, has then, uh, is then DA. So we, have, we are able, by, by shifting the distance, to, um, to also manipulate um, by shifting the phase, we are also able to manipulate the measured distance. So by rearranging those uh, two equations, it is uh, then possible to come up with the required phase shift in order to, um, to manipulate the distance to be a, a desired distance, dA. So, so using this equation, we can find the phase shift required to deliberately manipulate the distance, the measured distance, to be dA. So to implement this particular attack, um, we used a digital, a simple digital phase shifter IC. And um, this, this uh, phase shifter then can apply the, the required phase manipulations to the ranging signals. And importantly, um, this allows us to, to shift the phase without any uh, carrier synchronization. So the attacker does not need to generate own signals or utilize any phase locked loops. And using the phase shifter, uh, we manipulate all the consecu consecutive phase uh, measurements of the victim parties. And in the phase-based ranging implementations uh, we examined, uh, the, phase, uh, the measurement was actually realized as a linear frequency sweep, um, where the RF carrier frequency is incremented by the value delta F each time uh, the parties can continue with the next carrier. So delta F is constant. 
And uh, therefore, it is sufficient um, to ensure a phase difference phi A between the consecutive carriers. And this can be easily achieved by incrementing the phase, um, the phase shift to setting by phi A each, uh, with each carrier. So to time these manipulations of these carrier frequencies, um, we use then the, the, the RF power detector of our relay, which is, uh, which is there anyway. Um, so we then achieve a coerced synchronization to the ranging tone exchange of the victim parties. So this plot shows the distances measured by the victim parties using uh, phase-based ranging. And here we see the, uh, the measured distance um, when there is no attack, showing that, uh, that the nodes are shown the actual node distance of 23 meters. And now when we enable the uh, distance manipulation, we can see um, that the attacker can arbitrarily manipulate the measured distances to any desired value, say uh, one meter or five meters, 10 meters, um, or even 50 meters. So we conclude that our attack um, succeeds to arbitrarily manipulate the measured distances um, at will. So it like both decreasing and increasing the measured distances. So in our previous experiment, we forwarded the phase-based ranging signals, which allowed the victim parties uh, to correctly measure the distance and detect the attack. And now when we activate the distance measurement, um, then we can see that uh, the measured distances are reduced to around two meters. And thus, we successfully manipulated the measured distance while we simultaneously forwarded uh, the signal range to, to be more than 90 meters. Um, so regarding some countermeasures, in the general sense for more like a smartphone-based access control, um, it would be possible to, to leverage the smartness of the smartphone to, to prevent a continuous transmission of unlock commands. So um, we could trigger the, the transmission of these commands based um, on GPS position or on some sensor data to, to impede the, uh, the, the attack. Um, and another possibility would, of course, be to use out-of-band channels. Uh, because most of the modern cars um, nowadays have cellular connections as well, and this could then be used to um, to, to validate the um, the assumed proximity between the parties. Uh, the second possibility would be to to use wireless distance measurement in general, and um, one possibility would be, of course, to use a direct time of flight measurement, and we already have heard about this uh, this morning. Um, to implement a distance bounding protocol, which essentially, again, is a challenge response protocol. And um, the question or the, the, the difficulty which arises from this here is, especially in the Bluetooth context, that the signal bandwidth is limited. And this also limits the measurement accuracy uh, available for the, for the distance measurement. And uh, another, frequency, uh, another um, countermeasure would be to utilize random frequ frequency hopping. Uh, for the carrier phase-based ranging procedure, because this would then um, this would then invalidate the assumption of the linear frequency sweep, and instead uh, this would uh, then render our attack, our specific phase shift, shift to attack, more difficult because it would then require the attacker to know the frequency. This slide concludes my talk and. Um, we introduced a bidirectional analog physical layer relay attack, which can be applied to time division duplexing wireless systems. And, and thereby we avoid uh, self-interference uh, to cure. And we uh, demonstrated a range extension attack against Bluetooth communications and demonstrated a successful um, range extension attack against the phone key system of the Tesla Model 3. And we finally investigated phase-based ranging as a countermeasure, and we introduced a novel distance manipulation attack, which um, is performed simultaneously with range extension. Thanks for your attention, and uh, I'm happy to take questions. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, any questions? Oh. 
<laughs> Hi. Uh, so for the Tesla thing, is that limit of the 65 meters um, because of your measurements, or is that an actual limit? Because if it's RSSI based, I would imagine that you could even use maybe an audit band channel and then amplify it over kilometers. Actually, uh, we expect that this would be possible. Um, we also started to looking into something like this, but then we, we actually ran out of time because we, we found a friendly Tesla driver who, who, <laughs> who gave us his Tesla, but just uh, for six hours or so. So we were not able to, to further investigate this, uh, but it would be possible in principle, definitely. And uh, the 65 meter um, range uh, comes from from our setup, and actually, uh, we were um, we were running a bit out of space on the on the side where we conducted the experiment as well, because there were actual actually actual traffic going on. <laughs> okay, understand. And what happens when you drive away when it is unlocked and started? Uh, I, I, as far as I know, there are some secure or safety regulations that uh, would require the car to stay on. And we, we actually perceived no limits on this because we, we were then, after the successful relay attack, um, able to drive away. Will this be fixed by Tesla somehow? Uh, we, we informed Tesla, in fact, and also all the other affected parties, that is the Bluetooth ZIG and uh, the manufacturer of a smart lock, which we also investigated. But um, Tesla did not respond to us. Okay, thanks. Tesla is busy with SpaceX and sending Tesla to, to the... <laughs> To the moon or Mars, I don't know. Okay, so um, any other question? Uh, online questions? No? Okay, no. So thank you very much. Thanks so much. Have a nice life. Okay, bye.